Lately, I've been working on improving the quality of my aerial imagery to generate higher resolution ortho mosaic. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I've done a lot with CHDK and the Canon SX260. And in this case, lately I've been flying with the Sony Nex5. It's a great camera, produces high quality images, but what you'll need is a way to actually trigger this since you're not using any sort of custom firmware. And that's where this little board comes in from Flytron. It's the SLED version two. It has a infrared LED on it. And with this little board, we can remotely trigger our Sony based on GPS distance. And you just sticky tape your board right over your infrared receiver on the camera. And let me show you how it works and then I'll demonstrate how to set everything up. Let me also point out that you can trigger this directly from your transmitter if you want to. The SLED V2 actually has two modes, a photo mode as well as a video recording mode. So pretty cool that that can be done very easy to set up but let me go ahead and demonstrate here in Mission Planner you'll see that I'm going to right click and then I'll click trigger camera now you see that photo is taken we'll do it once again and that's actually running through one of the auxiliary ports on Pixhawk the first thing you need to do to make sure this is possible you'll go into the camera settings and there's a drive mode option and you'll select remote control and that's all you need to do to enable that infrared remote option. You'll want to make sure that you mount your infrared trigger on your Sony. I use some Scotch double sticky tape. I'll put a link to it below, but it's rated up to 10 pounds. So this stuff works really well. On the other end, you'll see that I'm running it to RC10, which is also known as auxiliary port number two. And that's all that's necessary for your hardware setup. Now let's dive into our parameters. So right now I'm connected using Mission Planner wirelessly over the 3DR radios. I'm going to go to Config and Tuning, select Full Parameter List. Now the method that I normally use is in the Full Parameter List, I will use the Find button. And the first thing we'll do is we'll search for Relay underscore Pin. And by default, you'll probably see that set to minus one. I'm setting it to 51, which represents the Pixhawk Auxiliary Out 2, which I demonstrated earlier, is the port that the LED trigger is currently plugged into. As always, make sure you write your parameter changes. Now we're going to look for the camera trig type. And we want to make sure that we're set to zero, which is the servo trigger type. Now with our parameters set, we're going to go over to Initial Setup and we'll select Camera Gimbal. At the bottom of the Camera Gimbal screen, there's a shutter selection. We're going to set that to RC10, which maps to the Auxiliary 2 port. This took me a little while to figure out because with the Flytron SLED trigger, there are two modes. There's a photo mode as well as a video recording mode. So. For photo mode, you want to set this shutter value of pushed to 1000 and then not pushed, the default value. We'll leave that at 1500. So now with that set up, we'll go back to the flight data screen. I can right click, hit trigger camera now, and you'll see that it'll take photos. And so now let me demonstrate the video recording mode. I'm going to change the value of the shutter pushed from 1000 to let's say 1800. Just click off of that to save it. Then we'll go back to our flight data screen. Now let's check out what happens when I right click and select trigger camera now. Now you can see that it's in video recording mode. And I can always right click, hit trigger camera now again, and it's done recording a video. Okay, so that's the basic setup, but we have one more issue to take care of when we're actually flying a mission. We want to set the cam trig distance value so that we can get nice images that are evenly spaced out. And since I won't actually be able to demonstrate this in the air today, what I'll do is I'll change this from zero to a value of one. And just because of the GPS bouncing around while I'm in the garage, we will see that trigger the camera. So I'll go ahead and write these parameters. 
those parameters have been written and now you can see that the GPS is drifting around beyond that one meter boundary and automatically triggering our camera. So that's how you set up the Flytron infrared trigger with your Sony NAX. In an upcoming video I'll demonstrate some of the results I've been getting with this setup as well as show you what I do to get the actual location of when that trigger command was issued so those images can be properly geotagged because unlike the Canon SX260 this does not have GPS built in. Be sure to check the video description for a link to this infrared trigger. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.